<laughs> All right, so these are the five things we're going to write down. But you have to unlock them before you can write them. Okay, so the first box, the red box, is where we have to go first. What is a parallelogram? Okay, perfect. A parallelogram has to be a quadrilateral. With two parallel sides. I take that? One set of parallel sides. Each side is parallel to the other. So, two sets of sides are parallel. Oh. So, yeah, Rape's doing this, right? So, these sides are parallel and these sides are parallel, but how do you justify the relationship between opposites that we're looking for? So, a parallelogram is a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides that are parallel. So, does that seem like a super complicated definition? No? Sad day. Can a triangle be a parallelogram? No. No, why not? Perfect. It is not a quadrilateral. So you have to unlock the part that it is a quadrilateral. It is a four-sided figure. And if a four-sided figure has both pairs of opposite sides that are parallel, it becomes the shape known as a parallelogram. Now, what else can Baker do with parallelograms? Right. So when you hear the word parallel, we went through that entire chapter three about parallel lines and transversals. So when you draw a parallelogram, it has two sets of transversals. Then we unlock the ability to do Alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, same side interior angles, same side exterior angles, corresponding angles. Remember all those special angle pairs that we did? They're all part of our proofs on that one test. A, I, A, A, E, A, all that fun stuff. So this shape has all of those parallel properties. Now we have a parallelogram. Now we've, we've just established what a parallelogram is. So what can you conclude about a parallelogram? What do you think is true for the shape specifically? Okay. No. Opposite angles are congruent. I think that's behind the green box. That is one shape, one property of parallelograms. No, it doesn't. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then Opposite angles are congruent. So, man, like I know how complicated this is, and I feel like you guys aren't reading far enough into it. So, if you have a four sided figure that happens to be a parallelogram, then opposite angles become congruent to each other. Does that sound complicated? It sounds complicated, but is it complicated? So what we're talking about here is if I draw a parallelogram, all it says is that this angle and this angle are equal. And this angle and this angle are equal. Those are called opposite angles. Cool, right? Not bad? What else can we conclude or talk about with parallelograms. Now that is a property of polygons. So it is not parallelogram specific. That's a quadrilateral property. Yes, so what do we know about an obtuse angle and an acute angle or supplementary? So which two angles are supplementary? So the book calls those consecutive angles. 
So if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then consecutive angles are supplementary. So that means the neighboring angles add up to 180. Parallelograms have four supplementary pairs. Yeah, so the parallelogram is spelled wrong uh, for all the rest of these. Because I did it at 545 this morning and copy and paste failed me. So when it says consecutive angles are supplementary, This angle and this angle add up to 180. And this angle and this angle add up to 180. And this angle and this angle add up to 180. And those two angles add up to 180 because they are same side interior angles across the parallel lines and transverses. So we've said everything there is to say about the angles in a parallelogram. Opposite angles are congruent and consecutive angles are supplementary. What else can you conclude or what else do you know? What else can you guess about parallelograms? Perfect. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then opposite sides are congruent. These are repetitive, aren't they? Or at least the first part is. So if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then opposite sides are congruent. So that means if the top's 10, how big's the bottom? Ten. If the right side's 4, how big is the left side? 4. Pretty basic. So we all notice about these all these statements right here. It's Parallelogram is spelled incorrectly, and the geometric connection is that they're all conditional yeah. statements. So if the hypothesis is true, then the conclusion can be true. So you think I can write those backwards? The converse of that statement? If opposite angles are congruent, then a quadrilateral is a parallelogram? I don't know where that's going. All right, last one, the mysterious blue box. So we've talked about... Opposite sides are congruent, opposite angles are congruent, consecutive side, consecutive angles are supplementary. What else is there to discuss about parallelograms? What do you call that red line, or I'm sorry, that blue line and that green line? S specifically, they're called diagonals. They go vertex to vertex. So what do you think is true about that red line and that green line? Sorry, the blue line and the green line. Sorry, I pulled the clip my team. Huh? They're not perpendicular. They do intersect at a very specific location. Diagonal intersection? No, no, no. Ortho center and circumcenter are triangle specific properties. The, middle, the exact middle. So the blue line cuts the green line in half, and the green line cuts the blue line in half. What's that fancy word we use for cutting the line? Bisect. Diagonal is bisect. So if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then diagonals bisect each other. So it means the green line cuts the blue line in half, and the blue line cuts the green line in half. So if this piece is 8, how big is this piece? Yes, well done. If this piece is 4, how big is this piece? Four. Yes, well done. Guys, that is everything parallelograms. How do you feel? Good. Does it get harder? Probably. Not really. No. no. So these four properties are what we're going to explore today. We're going to look at a few questions. 
If you want to write them down, great, but I think that you should be able to see these and kind of understand what's going on, right? So I'm going to show you what the book defines these as, and then uh, we'll get through the rest of it. So the book says, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, so if opposite sides are parallel, then opposite sides are congruent. Make sense? The markings there? Uh, let's talk about this right here. What does that say? Does that mean, is that like the symbol for parallel? That is the, the geometric notation for a parallelogram. So if it says that W, X, Y, Z, and it says this, that is saying parallelogram W, X, Y, Z. Once it says that it is a parallelogram, all four of those properties are unlocked. Okay? So it says it is a parallelogram, so opposite sides are congruent. It is a parallelogram, so consecutive sides are supplementary. Does that make sense? It is a parallelogram, so opposite angles are congruent. And it is a parallelogram, so diagonals bisect each other. So let's try this. How big is X? But why? Because consecutive angles are supplementary. So if this is 50, do we have the ability to solve for the rest of the angles inside of that? The opposite angle is 50. And then magically, there's 360 degrees in that shape. All the consecutive angles are supplementary. All the opposite angles are congruent. Those have to equal each other, right? The definition is that opposite angles are congruent. So these two uh, expressions should be equal to each other. Uh, so as you walk through this, 60 equals 2x, and 30 equals x. So this one's 90, and this one's 90. That means that they're all 90. So what shape is that? It is a parallelogram. It's only a regular parallelogram when all the sides are the same oh, no. and all the angles so are the same. Square square. Square. Do you want to play that game right now? No. Okay. <laughs> so right now we're looking at properties of parallelograms. That is a parallelogram with four right angles, which has its own special name. We'll get to that later. But you, know, but you don't know what a rectangle looks like. No offense. What about this guy? Mumbles, right? There's a lot of different, I mean, there's three ways to solve this problem. X is equal to 30. So you could, you, you could solve this problem by saying opposite angles are congruent. And you would be successful. You could say that consecutive angles are supplementary and you would be successful. Or all of those expressions add up to 360 because it is a quadrilateral and there's 360 degrees in every quadrilateral. Which way would you like to do it? Opposite. That is the smartest way. That is the most rapid way. I'm going to choose x plus 35 is equal to 2x minus 5. Subtract an x from both sides. Add 5 to both sides. So 120 minus 15. 80 minus 5. Well, that doesn't seem right. Is that right? Are they supplementary? Okay, you're good. 80 plus 25. Does that check out? No. 40 plus 37. Does that work? Yes. Does it all work? Yes. We're all happy? Yes. Are these complicated? No. It's all really quiet today. It's just easy? Yes. Is it boring? No. Yes. Should we do a proof? No. no. <laughs> all right. 
What's the definition that supports the method? Consecutive intervals or supplementary. What's the definition that supports this method? Uh, Diagonals by a sec. Now, when you do this, 4x minus 1 equals 3x plus 4. Ma magic happens. How long is each piece? Huh? Now, how big is each angle? See how I could, in, you know, in about three months, I could ask this question and you could solve it. But right now, nobody cares. Is there any way to do anything else with this problem? No, you're done. Not enough information to do anything else. So there are some properties that are just very specific, and there are some properties that allow you to do more stuff. Okay, this is like the first question on your assignment. It says you have parallelogram A, B, C, D, and the perimeter of this parallelogram is, I think it's like 56. No. Sixty-eight. So the perimeter of this shape is sixty-eight. So what do you know about this shape? The perimeter is 68. So I'm going to put that in the middle. What else do you know? Those the opposite sides are the same. Opposite sides are congruent. So you can solve 3x minus 2 equals 2x plus 6. Or you could solve 2x minus 4 equals x plus 4. Which one do you want to do, right or left? 2x minus 14. This one? Does that work out over here the same way? So x equals 8 all the way around. Now, is the perimeter 68? What is 16 plus 6? What is 24 minus 2? 22. What is 16 minus 4? And what is 8 plus 4? Is the perimeter 68? Does knowing the perimeter even affect the problem? No, it does not. You could have said all three of those, all four of those expressions add up to 68 and solved it that way if you wanted to. Right? So just extra, the way you present the question, you can put a perimeter thing in there or not. I hate the way that that's drawn. Yeah, and is that drawn to scale? That, so that is the, the end-all, get-out-of-jail-free card for teachers, and they draw things that are not drawn correctly. Uh, ooh, okay. Who wants to take a stab at this one? Is this on our assignment? I mean, is the property? Why is Why do you want this? Which one? Oh. X's and Y's. So all you know is that diagonals bisect and that this piece equals this piece. Did you know that? But when you got to it, you're like, I can't solve that. So try the other one. This piece equals this piece. Well, does that help? So instead of solving these independently, you solve them concurrently. That's called a system of equations. You can take this y out and substitute a 2x in. So that'd be 2x. Did I write that correctly? Oh, wait, no, no. So now I'm going to say that 3x equals 2x. That's substituting 2x in for y. Subtract 2x from both sides and x equals 4. So if x equals 4, how long is this piece? 8. How long is this piece? 8. 3 times 4? 12. Huh. Now what? Oh yeah, y is 8. So what is 8 plus 4? 12. Do you need to know that? Do you have x and y? 
That's probably the other hard question on your assignment. All right, I'm feeling good. You feeling good? Do you want to do this together, or do you want to help me do this one thing? Together. together? All right, so 15 or 16? Both? 15? Yeah. All right, so what's the first step of a two-column proof? Write statements. Two columns, statements, and reasons. Write the given statement. What is the given statement? Does that look like a given statement to you? Yeah. No, because it says and, it doesn't say like. No, but is it giving you anything? Yeah, it is. They are parallelograms. Now that you know that they are parallelograms, all of those properties have been unlocked. So why is why is the fact that they are parallelograms true? Then you can say parallelograms. Cool. So we know for a fact that those two shapes are parallelograms. What can we conclude based on that information? R W and X Y Z are parallel. Perfect. Yes. Does that help us prove that angle R and angle X are congruent? Yeah. You're going too hard. More basic. Yeah, so the first thing I would write is that angle R is congruent to angle T. We have to know why that statement is true. Oh, there, um, what is it called? Um, what did you just tell me? Oh, what is that? The definition of a parallel. So don't tell me that they are opposite angles. They are congruent because the shape is a parallelogram. Does that make sense? Why are opposite angles congruent in a parallelogram? Because the definition of a parallelogram says they are. So remember those four definitions that we wrote? Was one of those opposite angles are congruent? So that's why the statement angle R and angle T are congruent is true. So what else should we say? Angle X is congruent to angle T. Angle X is congruent to angle T. Do you want to do that? Can I fix it for you? Angle T is congruent to angle X. That's a better. Those two angles are congruent because they are opposite angles of a different parallelogram. So statement number three. They are the definition of a parallelogram. So remember, I flipped that statement. I asked you guys to flip that statement so you can see this. If it's repeated, then it's deleted. What property is that? The transitive property. Was it that bad? No. Let's go ahead and try 16. Just talk about it. Don't shake your head at me. Please prove that this line, a different color, XY and RS are parallel. So they are parallelograms. What do you know about XY and TZ? They're parallel. Why? Parallel. Definition of parallelogram. What do you know about S, R, and T, Z? They are parallel. Because it's parallelogram. Because it's parallelogram. So. S, R is parallel to Y, X. Why? Because. Is there a transitive property of parallel lines? 
because they're both parallel to the same line, they're parallel to each other. Was it that bad? Okay. So here's the last chunk I have to get through, and then I'll set you free on your assignment for today. Uh, I'm not even going to talk about this. I'm just going to show you. Here. You see all these parallel lines? Right? So we have this line in black. Parallel line. Parallel line. Parallel line. And parallel line. All the green lines are parallel. The property here is that all the distances between the parallel lines are the same. So if I look at this line right here, how long is this line right here? So how long is this line right here? And how long is this line right here? The distance between the parallel lines is always congruent. Um, if this piece is 5, how big is this piece? How big is this piece? How big is this piece? Hardcore stuff? Okay. If this is 5.75, how big is this one? You're done. All right. Shapes. Should I make you earn this or just give it to you? Name those shapes. Triangle, All right, name these shapes. Now, oh, you want to us to the shapes as a whole? Now, classify these shapes. Classify. Okay, classify these shapes. Concave. Convex. Oh, okay. Do you know the difference? Have you ever been taught that before? It's like this. this. It's like with the lenses. So this, this, this is keyed off of the definition of a diagonal. If I draw a diagonal from here to here, is that inside or outside the shape? On? Is it outside? No. Is that outside? No. Is that outside? No. Is that outside? No. No. So no matter where I draw a diagonal, it is always either in or on the shape. If I tried that here, inside or outside? See that? See how it fails? So if I draw a line, a diagonal from vertex to vertex, and it is outside the shape, it is a convex polygon. I'm sorry, concave polygon. It's concaved in, like that. Just a good, a good way to start that. So we're doing half of the homework today, 2 through 14 and 18. Number two is probably the hardest question. Get over it. What, evens only? Evens only. 2 through 14 and 18, evens only. That's like seven questions. I'll give you guys a little bit of time to decompress this knowledge. Improve your worthiness.